Hi, my name is Mark Stone. I work for Southwest Electric. Today we're going to walk you through doing a visual inspection on an energized transformer. The reason we're doing this is to look for leaks, um, vacuums, pressures, level, oil levels, um, but basically leaks. Uh, of course, we're also looking at the paint condition of the transformer, uh, rust, trying to make sure that we don't develop leaks. We don't want oxygen in the transformer, and that's one of the number one reasons we get oxygen in transformers is because of leaks. Um, what we're going to talk about first, though, is we're going to talk about the nameplate of the transformer. We want to make sure that if we're doing a retest on the transformer of any kind, oil test, we want to make sure we're at the right transformer. You get a lot of, if you have a lot of paperwork and a lot of different things going on in a substation, it's very easy to pull a sample on the wrong transformer. And by doing that, how we do that is we look at the nameplate. Each nameplate on a transformer tells us a lot of information about what's going on in, or what is in the transformer. The primary, the secondary, the gallons of oil, uh, whether it's a delta Y connection, all sorts of information on there. Um, but what we need to verify is the serial number on the transformer if we're doing a retest on it. If we're not doing any kind of retest, we're just looking at it, doing a visual inspection on it, you know, we don't really need that information. Still, it's good to collect it so we have it in our file systems and things like that. But what we want to do is, you got your nameplate, check that, verify it. And then what you want to do is you want to look at your gauges. We want to look at um, the level gauge. We want to look at the temperature gauge, the pressure vacuum gauge, if it has one. Uh, depending on the size of the unit. If it's got a nitrogen system or a conservator tank on it. Um, if we have, we have to remember that as the oil heats up, it expands. And as it cools down, it contracts. That's how in the um, spring and fall, when we have warm days and cold nights, we get a lot of pressure, or I'm sorry, we get a lot of vacuums on the transformers, which necessarily is not a bad thing but if it does develop a leak, it's going to suck stuff in atmosphere and moisture into it instead of making sure that we don't get that in the transformer, which is what we want. We don't want water, we don't want oxygen, things like that inside of our transformer because it prematurely ages the unit. So if we look at these name or if we look at these uh, um, gauges up here, on this transformer, the top temperature gauge and the oil level gauge is right next to each other, which makes it off very nice. This one's reading about, uh, I'm going to say from this angle, it looks like about 30 degrees C on the temperature, top oil. And if you look at the level gauge, the one on the left that has the 25, it actually says 25 degrees C, it says low and high. That's your level gauge. But at 20 or at 30 degrees on the temperature gauge, you'll look at that. And you notice how that arm is a little bit above the 25 degrees C. That's a normal level. We have to remember that oil heats up, it expands, cools down, it contracts. So if we had a 20 degrees C temperature, that oil, that arm on that oil level would be just a little bit below the 25 degrees C mark, and it would still be the normal level. But if we had that 20 degrees C and that arm stayed the same where it is now, you would consider that maybe a high level on the transformer. So we want to make sure that we have to look at both those gauges. They coincide with each other to make sure that we have an accurate level on the transformer. So we talked about those two, the pressure vacuum, or I'm sorry, the temperature gauge and the level gauge. Let's walk around to the other side of the transformer. There's a winding temperature gauge I want to point out to you, and also a pressure vacuum system that I want to talk a little bit about also. So here we are on the other side of the transformer. We've got a winding temperature gauge up there. Um, we're not too interested in that really, um, because we're more interested in the top oil temperature and uh, the pressure vacuum and the level gauge. Okay, so we have our winding temperature up there. Like I said, we're not too concerned about that one. But what we're really concerned about is a pressure vacuum gauge. 
And if you look at this, what we're really concerned about is this gauge right here. Uh, the reason for that is if you look at the center, top center of it, you'll see a zero. Anything to the right of that means we've got a pr positive pressure, which this one's reading about three, two and a half. Um, but if we go back, if it goes to the left of that zero, that means we have a vacuum on our transformer. And that's really what we don't want because if we do develop a leak, it's going to suck atmosphere in, moisture in, all sorts of different things into it, contaminants and things like that that can prematurely age the transformer. And on top of that, if we do develop a leak um, above the oil level, you're not going to see it. You won't see any oil but you'll notice it by the, how quickly you're going through nitrogen that's in that tank. Uh, nitrogen is a gas that we test for, and it's also a gas that we put into the transformer. Uh, we can either use nitrogen, and there is a standard for the type of nitrogen that you should use uh, putting into a transformer, which is ASTM D1933. Um, or you can use dry air, depending on what you, uh, you prefer. Um, okay, let's look at the radiators now and the fans on this. Uh, we want to make sure that our, like I said earlier, heat is one of the most devastating things to a transformer. So we want to operate our transformers as cool as possible. If we get up to a top oil temperature of 70 degrees C or more, we're doing serious damage to the inside of the transformer. We, we have a loading guide that helps us with transformers and how we can disperse heat, other things that we can manufacture or purchase, uh, like external cooling systems for transformers. But if we just follow along with the loading guide, um, we should do pretty good with our how our top oil temperatures are at. But as you can see, this one's got fans on it, on the radiators. This also has very thin radiator tubes on it which is basically what we used to call in this industry as pancake radiators. They're very thin, but they spread the oil out over a wider area, so it's easier to cool it. Now, the oil in the transformer, or the liquid in the transformer, just doesn't sit there. Okay, it does what it's called thermal siphoning. As it heats up, it rises, it goes out into the radiator tubes up into the top, comes down through the radiator tubes and cools down and then goes back into the transformer and repeats at it. Like I said, it's called thermal siphoning. Um, and the, these fans are here to help with that cooling. Uh, again, it's very important that we operate our top oil temperatures below. Um, I don't really like seeing a transformer above 60 degrees C, but in today's world, that's very rare that you really see that because we have to get as much load out of it as possible. Um, but these radiators have what's also called a butterfly valve on them. And what they do is you can actually shut those off if you trust them, drain the oil out of the individual bank of radiators here and you can replace or regasket um, those um, that butterfly valve there because they do leak. And after a while, if you do replace, let's say the bottom one is leaking, the uh, the, um, or the gasket it starts to leak because gaskets do have a life expectancy. Don't just replace the bottom if you take the thing off or take the radiator off. Replace the top and bottom at the same. Uh, but we're still, we're just doing a visual inspection. We're looking for leaks. We're trying to find them. So that's a very good place to look because that's usually where it starts. And also that's where a lot of places where it's going to start rusting first. That and uh, you're lifting lugs up at the top up there. Uh, we scratch those up when we installed it or when we moved the transformer into its location. And so we can scratch the paint up and that's where it generally starts to rust also. Okay, on this one, we have what's called an LTC compartment. So as demand is increased, let's say it's a 90 degree day out and everybody's got their air conditioners running and they need more power out of the transformer, this LTC compartment changes taps, increases the voltage, 
therefore increases the demand that they've needed, so it takes care of that demand that's needed. Now, inside the LTC compartment, this is a completely separate compartment from the transformer. Inside here, you have contacts in there that every time it changes taps, it arcs. It's called an arc and oil tap, LTC, load tap change. And if those aren't seated perfectly, it's going to arc and continually arc, which the oil is in there to quench that arc, but it's not capable, you know, we're, gonna, we're building gases up, acetylene in particularly, every time that changes taps. Manufacturers state that every time that, there are consumable parts inside that uh, LTC. And what the manufacturers suggest that every so many contact, every time that changes contacts, there's a little counter in here, right here that you can kind of look at. And that tells you how many times this thing has ta changed taps. Now, as maintenance individuals, we realize that, you know, the um, taps inside there in the LTC, springs, Geneva gears, things like that, get used up. They weaken, the springs weaken, relax a little bit. The contacts get used up. We have to replace those so often. So the manufacturer tells you, and I don't know exactly what that number might be, but let's say for every 10,000 taps, you need to go in there change your contacts, change your springs, and do all that. Well, we know a lot of things can go on. That, that could take, you know, if the engineer seated this transformer perfectly, this thing's hardly ever going to change taps. So it could take 15 years, 20 years to get to that 10,000 taps. So we know for a fact that we have to do oil testing on the LTC just to make sure of what's going on inside there. We don't want it to build up too much acetylene. Acetylene is an explosive gas. So with that in mind, you know, we keep an eye on that, but we still do oil testing on it, just like we do the tap or the transformer. They say there's no moving parts inside the transformer, but you can hear the humming in the background of this video. And what that is, is that's the winding in, inside the transformer vibrating back and forth. So that's why we do oil testing on it why we do visual inspections on it because we want to make sure that we keep that paper in as clean a state as possible. It needs to be able to relax with the winding and compress with the winding as demand is increased on it. One last thing we wanted to touch bases on today was bushings. Uh, you've got different mounted uh, bushings. You've got top mounted bushings. You've got uh, side mounted bushings depending on what size the transformer is. This one, of course, is top-mounted bushings. This one has uh, is a little bit older of a transformer and has brown, the brown bushings on it. It means that it's basically um, they're older bushings. The newer bushings that we get today are gray-colored. Some are oil-filled. Uh, you have composite bushings. You have draw and lead-through bushings, things like that. But they're all gasketed. So there's another place to verify that you're not getting any kind of leaks. Um, if you really, really are interested in something, there's a product out there called Snoop that if you put a um, pressure into the transformer, basically it's like a soapy water. And, you know, when you check a gas line and it bubbles, the same thing can happen with the transformer if it's above the oil level, if the leak is above the oil level. Put a little bit of a pressure in it, a couple pound pressure, and then uh, just squeeze that or put that around the bushings and um, see if it's uh, bubbling up it's leaking or anything like that but remember that you know their bush the bushings are gasketed gaskets go bad on transformers and you're really not going to see much of a, any kind of leak unless you got a real serious pressure on this transformer okay so we were at the other transformer and that one had a nitrogen system on it an actual tank of nitrogen sitting there pumping nitrogen into it this one doesn't have that. This one has a conservator tank. And if you look at that big box on top of this bank of radiators right here, that's what that is. You have different types. You have unbladdered and bladdered um, conservator tanks. Bladders have a basically a bladder inside there, and the oil is inside it. No atmosphere, actually the atmosphere comes inside the bladder, 
and keeps a positive pressure in the bladder, keeping a positive pressure on the oil. No oil comes in contact with atmosphere, uh, which is what we don't want it to do. But that keeps the positive pressure on the main tank of the transformer. Now in the nitrogen system transformer, you have a dead space or a head space above the oil level and between the top, the oil level and the bottom of the inside of the lid of the transformer. This is up inside that conservator tank. It's not in the transformer. So the oil go in this transformer goes all the way to the top of the transformer. Uh, so basically that's uh, doing a visual inspection on the transformer. We just have a lot of places to look around quick overview, check where radiators, your radiators, check anything that has a gasket on it. The transformer hums a lot, it vibrates, bolts can become loose, things like that. And remember, gaskets um, do have a shelf life or have an age, and they start to go bad. Uh, and remember, you might not, if it does have a leak, you might not even see it because it might be above the oil level in the transformer, and you just won't see any oil anymore. So that's how we do a visual inspection of the transformer. Um, it's very important, you know, we talk about how expensive these things are um, to replace if something goes bad on them. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get the biggest return on our investment or our company's investments that we possibly can. And we do that by oil testing, doing visual inspections, and doing preventative maintenance on them, basically. Uh, we want a good, reliable electrical system in our facilities or in our substations and are hooked up to our grid and uh, so we want to make sure that uh, you know, we don't lose power or nothing like that happens for us. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Um, again, my name is Mark Stone. I'm with Southwest Electric and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you.